grab your favorite Earl Grey and curl up to a story called A Cup of Tea by Catherine Mansfield. Let's break it down and talk about what it can mean. Do you know I don't like tea? <laughs> oh, dude, I have tea every night. This is this is my jam right here. And by jam, I mean my tea. This is the price of a cup of tea right here for me. Welcome to the Codex Cantina, where I am Una. And I am tealess crypto <laughs> if you are new around these parts we take some of the most important stories that have influenced even today's authors if you're down for a conversational approach to literature hit that subscribe button and join us on the journey and as always you start off publication information a cup of tea by Catherine mansfield was first published in the storyteller in may 1922 and we'll leave links down in the description below where you can listen and read for free born and raised in new zealand Catherine mansfield is an early modernist writer and she's really captured our attention as she's writing to a very interesting time in early 20th century New Zealand when you know it was still under British rule it was not its independent uh, country that we know and love today so there was still a lot of class and money discrepancies and all of her stories kind of just chip away at some of the problems and maybe a different angle at it and it's very engaging for us. And as always, when we talk about Catherine Mansfield, she brings up our favorite topic of class divide, and we do see that in this piece today. But she brings some unique flavor to this one with some look at appearances, and sometimes that isn't always what it makes out to be. So the story opens up with a sketch of a very wealthy, well-dressed, and red woman named Rosemary Fell. She visits a quaint little antique shop where the man working there saves special things to show her because he doesn't want to show those things to other people who wouldn't appreciate it, right? Those poor people. <laughs> so he offers her a special box for 28 guineas, of which she turns down. Oh. So mm. she leaves the shop, mm. and outside she finds a small little girl who begs for the price of a cup of tea. She whisks the little girl away back to her home, past the servants so she can rush her into the room and take her clothes and dress her up and give her some tea. Play dolly with her. <laughs> it's so weird. And it's funny, too, because she's like, I need that brandy. Bring me the brandy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm uh, probably that way, too, but I don't know. This is a little excessive on her drinking. Yeah. So her husband, Philip, comes home and is just like, oh, this is not right. You can't have her here. She's much too pretty. And uh, Rosemary is like, pretty? Pretty? <laughs> and storms off into the other room, gets her checkbook out, and uh, ushers the little girl off. And later on, she dresses herself up in some makeup and uh, tells her husband that the little girl decided to move on and kind of questions her husband of, hey, man, don't, don't I look pretty? Do I look pretty? Am I looking good? Do I look good? <laughs> Philip, do I look pretty? I look pretty. I look pretty. <laughs> All right. Moving into analysis. I like Catherine Mansfield's approach to how she talks about class divide. There's a lot of different ways we can characterize, you know, the rich. there's tons of different types of rich, right? You know, most people are familiar with like the Ebenezer Scrooge or even like the Wunzler from the Lorax where they just hoard and hoard and hoard and take what they can and don't care about giving back to the others or noblesse oblige, right? Well, here we have the philanthropist rich, kind of. like She wants to be the philanthropist, right? She wants to look like she's giving or taking uh, you know, care of the lower class, in a sense, or giving to them. But is she really doing it out of the, tr the, the, the desire to want to be better? Or is she doing it for the look? Or is she doing it f as long as this little girl doesn't rise up and take her power? I don't know. Let's talk about that a little bit today. When we think about the rich... This was very peculiar to me because I thought, okay, this is going to be almost like a hero's journey for Rosemary. We're going to be introduced to this character. She's going to have this Ebenezer Scrooge kind of event. Uh, bad things are going to be ensue. She's going to become a better person. And we're going to see her redemption by the end of the story. And my first little clue to that was when she didn't just outright buy the box. Because mm -hmm. in my kind of opinion and the way that I have seen it portrayed in many books and movies and stories is that the rich person, if they're, you know, living that lavish lifestyle, they will buy it no matter what. When you have money that it it doesn't, the, the price doesn't matter. You don't need a price tag on the item. And when she doesn't buy the music box for the 28 guineas, 
that was my first clue to, oh man, she's showing restraint. She mm-hmm. actually isn't going to just waste her money. She is having, you know, a moment here and we're going to see more growth of her throughout the story. And that doesn't happen. And I love that kind of anti twist throughout the story with Rosemary that Mansfield has done here. That's a good point. And she walks outside and it's raining. And a lot of times in terms of expectations, when it's raining or when characters go through a river and get wet, typically that represents rebirth or a chance at leading a better or newer life. But then like she kind of throws that curveball like you're talking about, like the the umbrellas were what, hateful, angry, like the, the, the lights were sad, like the, the picture of the scene was rather hysterical. And then comes along this little beggar girl that's just like, I would like the price of the cup of tea. Like, not, can I get some money? Not, hey, can you, you know, I'm, I'm, I need to buy, the, you know, food, or can I, you know, something like that. She wants the price of a cup of tea after they had just talked about how the cup of tea can be extra special, you know, kind of like that home feel. I thought that was interesting the way the little girl phrased that. Did you pick up on that? Yeah, for me, that was very interesting because I thought to myself, wow, Mansfield is really making a point here of not only class divide, that sometimes people that have more than lord that over others that have lesser than, and that intelligence is something that can't be bought or sold with money in these class systems that she's kind of writing against because the little girl is is intelligent she just doesn't have money or come from money because she knows her audience the little girl knows if i ask for money if i ask for something outright that these wealthy people value i'm never going to get it but if i ask mm, something very specific yeah. like buy me a cup of tea that they appreciate because that shows class you know that's something that your average person might not have it, it's showing a status symbol of well just can i get a cup of tea then because that's something that is you know fancy and i think that it's really showing the intelligence and the little girl knowing how she cannot kind of manipulate the situation so I love that phrasing that Mansfield used. Yeah, I think you've brought up some really good points about that as well as earlier when you're talking about the box that, you know, if hey, if you're looking to throw symbols out there, what could the box represent? It could be her desire to want to turn away from materialism, right? And I think this is kind of compounded when she starts to say, okay, instead of caring about material items, because like you said, she could just buy an order or whatever, I'm going to take care of this little girl. So to your point about the little girl asking quickly, uh, intelligently. Now Rosemary is like, okay, I'm going to show myself in the world. I can, I can take care of the poor people. I can use my money for good. And you have like these interesting characterizations over her too, where you'll notice that she's, she can't stand lilacs. She, they have no (laughs) shape. How could you like lilacs? Right. And I couldn't help but kind of compare that to thinking about how, in terms of the rich people at the time, how were they shaped? Like if the lilacs have no shape and shapes what gives something value, what's something that is shaping the rich at this point in time? Yeah, they get all of their status from their money. That's their quote, their wealth. Right. And they can give money away and help out this poor beggar girl that wants the price of a cup of tea. Give her a check, right? <laughs> <laughs> but only when it doesn't impact her own status or her own place in life whether it being pretty, that gives her sh- you know f- shape or form, whether it be money, that gives her shape or form. And I think we see that in the story, right? Because when Philip comes home, what's being threatened when he says that the little girl's pretty? Her own status or her own appearance. And we have really interesting writing with the monologue that's kind of happening here. You absurd creature, said Rosemary, and she went out of the library, but not back to her bedroom. She went to her writing room and sat down at her desk pretty. <laughs> absolutely lovely bold over her heart beat like a heavy bell pretty lovely she drew her checkbook towards her but no checks would be no use of course she opened a drawer and (laughs) took out five pound notes looked at them two put back holding the three squeezed in her hand she went back to the bedroom so you could see like like mansfield's writing her thoughts like so frantic Right. And it's not just, oh, this girl, you know, my husband thinks this girl's attractive. Like it's it's her status is being threatened. So she's going into this frenzy of what do I do? How do I what does she go for? Money. Because money is what gives her shape and power. She goes for the money to buy her solution, to buy her way out of it. I'm gonna give the girl money, send her on her way, and then I don't do we agree 
that the little girl didn't, you know, didn't ask to go away. It was when her status was threatened that she shoved her out the door. Yeah, when her beauty was challenged by another in the household by her husband, that's when everything went awry. And I feel like that is the the good twist in the story. This is where we see that Rosemary has done this all selfishly. For, there has no been growth of her as a person. And I feel like Mansfield is trying to say, you know, it takes more than just doing it. You have to actually mean it. While, yes, actions can speak louder than words— I think if you truly want to show that you've changed and you are a better person, it takes actions and words. And this is something that Rosemary doesn't have. And maybe even arguably a little bit of appearances are not what they seem, right? With the this idea that you think that she's turned the corner, but then she comes outside and the rain that's supposed to rebirth her is all of a sudden sad lamplights and hateful umbrellas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and, and mansfield even plays with their names a little bit too right when i when i thought about this i know her name is rosemary which is an herb but i kind of thought that the word rose there as well that is supposed to be a beautiful and you talked about the lilacs and how they have no shape and that rose mary thinks that the you know lilacs are the ugliest or they're the worst and then we get the little girl's name of you know her name's mrs smith which is probably not at the time like it is nowadays where that's a very common name but i just thought you can't get more generic than mrs smith well even her last name is fell too so perhaps that's a uh plan words of them falling from from grace or falling from uh, their task at hand which is seeing the error of their ways of thinking that money can can just be something that you flaunt and show but no it's not the money giving to the poor that is actually showing change it's like you said it's that turn of heart that rosemary never experiences she fell from her opportunity if you will there's one character that we haven't talked a lot about we talked about mrs smith the young girl we've talked about rosemary obviously because she's the main character but the husband always kind of intrigued me as well he has very few lines in the story he's only in it for a little tiny bit but i feel like that he is a catalyst for the whole thing and i kind of want to ask you this question do you think that he knew what he was doing manipulating his wife because he even <laughs> says we need to get rid of her right and mm -hmm. rosemary's like no i have to take care of this is my new project and he's like okay i know how i can get rid of her yep. easily quickly <laughs> if i say this specific phrase i know rosemary will get her feelings hurt or will get rattled and she'll she'll toss this girl back out on the street easily and so do you think he said that specific phrase he knew what he was doing to manipulate his wife well, you know what? I think Mansfield wrote it in a way, kind of like, do you remember that story, The Way Up to Heaven by Roald Dahl, where the husband knew how to press his husband or his wife's uh, buttons to make her eye twitch, like he knew what would just make her <laughs> angry? Dahl wrote oh, yeah. it in a way that actually is neutral, where you didn't know if he was doing it on purpose or not. And I felt the same way about Mansfield here as well. And maybe this says more about me, but if I was a betting man, I would have bet he did that on purpose to get that little girl out of here. <laughs> Yeah, because he knew that the little girl was probably better off not in the household, better out on the street than with, you know, his wife. Well, she got mm. like whisked away in the middle of the street, like coming into the house. Like if something happened to the little girl, like, you know, police are going to come knocking on their door. I don't know. <laughs> That's me. Being, I'm like super conservative over that stuff. I don't want nobody in my house. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, and then, you know, it's a time period that uh, people did kind of look out for each other. And, you know, this is a, a very, um, I think, interesting time period to write this in the 1920s. Um, I don't know. It's very interesting, this piece. I, I, I loved this piece. It was really good. So we'll leave a link to our other Mansfield Talks in a playlist down below. I think this is our third story of hers, and we got a few more planned coming up. Guys, if you are interested in hearing our opinions on what we thought about the story, overall ratings, that's what we're going into now. But make sure you hit that subscribe button to join us on the journey. And a quick shout out to one of our newest patrons, Stephanie Richards. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. And uh, we'll leave a link down in the description below where you can check out our Patreon page. All right, let's get into it. Mr. Una, what you think of this one? Oh, I got to go first? Goodness. All right. Uh, <laughs> in terms of ratings, I, I would say I always enjoy Mansfield. I think she has a unique flavor to how she explores class. Even though she has a Florida in all three of the stories that we've done it, I feel like each one's been at a unique angle. And she always makes me laugh, whether it be the <laughs> what happens to the neighbor at, a, at the, the garden party or here, the, the angry umbrellas. It just made me chuckle. So I enjoyed the stories. I'm going to go with an 8 out of 10. Oh, wow. I just want to say ditto. Can I say that? I feel the exact same way. Eight out of 10. 
I love how she can take a topic, a theme like class divide, and just always give it a little bit of nuance to feel fresh, even though that she seems to be hitting the same topic over and over again. It didn't feel boring. It didn't feel repetitive. I enjoyed all the descriptors. I enjoyed the characters. I was hoping for something else, but I was pleasantly surprised. So yeah, solid 8 out of 10. Good, good discussion. Guys, hit that subscribe button down below. We post videos every Monday and Thursday. Join us. Una out. Peace.